Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever you decide to watch this. This is another installment of Midtown Live. First and foremost, we welcome you back because it is another day and we are here for another episode of Midtown Live. While you are watching this, we want you to subscribe. We want you to share this. We want you to put it on all of your social media because we're trying to get the name of Jesus popular out there, you know, in these streets. So we want you to make sure that you do that. And while you're on our church website, because we have a church website, if you don't know, Jordan, there it is. He put on the screen, you know, Jordan, let, let, let's let's shout Jordan out real quick. Jordan is our um, video, like the, the editor, producer. He does all of that, all of that on the back end. Let's go ahead and let's shout Jordan out because he makes all of these videos possible. We wouldn't have videos if we didn't have the support from you. So while you are out there, thank you so much for watching all of our videos every week. We are so blessed that you have chosen to watch our videos and subscribe to all of our social media, to our Facebook, our Instagram. We are also on our, our church website. So thank you so much. Now, while you are out on our church website, Every donation counts, and we um, we thank you, thank you so much for everything. Because without your donations, we would not be able to bring good quality episodes that we do. Now, today we do have a special guest. I'm just gonna continue to um, push us further than this 21 days of prayer and fasting, which has been so good. So our um, guest speaker today, his name is Adam. He's our youth pastor from Ohio. Now, um, today he's gonna do an awesome job. So please sit back, relax, buckle up, and get ready to enjoy the sermon of today. Well, hey, everybody, uh, family over there at Midtown Church, so excited uh, to just kind of join with you guys uh, through via video. Uh, though I can't see you, uh, I know that uh, hopefully you're doing well and believe in God's best. I know it's a crazy time with COVID um, and everything going on, but uh, uh, my name is Adam Baird. I am the high school and college pastor at North Cleveland uh, Church of God here in t Cleveland, Tennessee. And uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, your pastors. Uh, Jeff and Brittany are the best. Their family are amazing. Known them a long time. So can we just take a quick pause and put our hands together for the greatest pastors on the planet and team, uh, mind you. Uh, looking forward to coming up there to um, St. Louis uh, soon. So uh, Jeff, put that on your calendar, buddy. Uh, but uh, no, but for real, it is an honor. And um, you know, when uh, Pastor Jeff reached out to me about uh, speaking to you guys, uh, I had one thing on my mind when um, when he did that, and I, I kept uh, thinking about a passage of scripture. If you want to turn with me to Luke chapter two and just hold it there for just a second. Um, uh, put your finger on it if you want to, right there on the chapter, chapter two. My mom told me uh, a major, major life uh, statement, never talk to strangers. So you probably, um, we don't know each other. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me before we even get started. I am a avid Red Bull fan. I will drink Red Bull uh, no matter what throughout the day. I don't care if, if, if people tell me how bad it is for me. It's still delicious. I love the taste. I love buffalo chicken sandwiches for anybody in the house that loves buffalo chicken sandwich. Make some noise. Um, I love Denny's. I, I think I love Denny's because they have great buffalo chicken. I don't know. It's just one of those things. I have four children, um, uh, Eva, Colin, Liam, and Ivy. They're a hot mess. Uh, our family, we all live here in Cleveland, and they are homeschooling as we uh, probably as we speak. They were a little bit behind today, but say that uh, just to say that um, now that we so somewhat know each other, I want to go to um, this passage of scripture and look at it uh, as we as we look into something that is unique. I know you guys are in a unique season, like like every church in America in the world. We're all in a very unique place. I want to speak from my heart tonight about, um, or this morning rather, about what it means to really be in relationship with God like, like we should be. I know it's different and it's uh, unique now than it ever has been before to be the church and to uh, find God in the church. But I'll never forget, I was here at this church, right here, um, right down the hall from where we're filming, I was, uh, we were set up for an event and uh, my four-year-old son at the time was two and a half, three, so he was running everywhere. Uh, I brought him with me. I brought him with me to church and I said, um, you know, I, I told my wife, I said, don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. I'll know where he is, I'll keep track of him, whole nine yards. I suffer from a condition called ADHD and I'm highly medicated for that. And so even on my highly medicated day that I was, uh, there I am, and I uh, told her a thousand times, I've, I've got him, I know right where he is, don't worry. Uh, as we're at the church, 
I'm setting things up, I turn around, and I can't find Liam. And so I just immediately, oh, well, maybe he's in the office. Went to the office, he wasn't at the office. Went down the hall, went in the hall, went to the bathroom, he wasn't in the bathroom. I started shouting, you know, his name, and uh, I had other people. It became like this search party. Uh, we went into panic mode. Um, and it was about that time, I heard a, a, an elderly woman come to me, uh, coming down the hall, and she said, Adam, Brother Adam. I was like, yes, ma'am. She said, are you looking for Liam? And I was like, yes, ma'am, I actually am right now. Can you tell me where he is? And she said, oh, he's down that way. Follow the trail. And I was like, okay, I'll follow the trail. I don't know what that means. What she meant by that was as I made a right turn down a hallway in our sanctuary area, um, I found one sock. And then about 20, maybe 30 feet later, I found another sock. As I continued to walk down this hall, I found a pair of shorts and two pairs of shoes, almost like the rapture took place slowly. As I continued to walk, I found a shirt and then a diaper. And then there, 25 feet further, stood my naked two and a half year old son, who apparently decided to go streaking at the church for the first time. And uh, I was a little embarrassed. Kind of proud though, felt a spiritual moment from father to son, felt like he was really getting into scripture because he danced like David danced. Hello. And I really feel like uh, that, was, that was good for him, but found him. But I lost my son. I lost the most important, like that's the, that's his, uh, you can lose your wallet, you can lose your keys, you can lose your cell phone. But if you lose your son, in the house of God. That is a huge, huge deal. And I want us to look at Luke chapter two because if I don't want to, I don't want to be the only bad dad right now. I know you I know I might be the only person at, at Midtown that has lost their kid at a grocery store or let alone at a church, but I I want you to be uh, at ease and at comfort because we're not the only ones that have ever done that. Matter of fact, the most important individual in the history of the world was lost at a church service. And um, we're gonna read about it. Luke chapter two, go with me here. You won't feel that bad as a parent as soon as you see this. Luke chapter two, verse 41. And this is what it says. It says, every year Jesus's parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. This was like a big party. This was basically God's party. It says that when he was there, when he was 12 years old, they went to the feast as they always did. After the feast was over, they started home, and the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Hello. Verse 44 says, thinking that Jesus was with them in the group, they traveled for an entire day. Then they began to look for him among their family and their friends. Now, if you're me, um, Hopefully you would know within an hour if you lost your son at the city that you were just in. But I realized a huge statement that if, if Mary and Joseph can lose God in God's house, so can you and I. And I want to speak to you tonight from the title, Missing Jesus. And so let me pray real quick, and then we're going to get started. Lord, I thank you so much for this, this, uh, this church. Thank you so much for the leadership. And God, I just pray that throughout this awkward, crazy, scary season of a pandemic, uh, that we actually find out what church is really all about. Not only that, we find out who you really are, and it becomes very personal. You allowed us to develop this relationship as we've gotten away from a lot of people, and we know that you're still there. And so God, I just pray over this uh, congregation and I pray over the people in the city uh, of St. Louis and that town that they're in. I pray that you would speak, and God, that we would listen in your name. And everybody said, amen. Um, you don't lose a child for three days. That's not, that's not a normal thing. That is a call defects thing. That is a police-involved uh, incident. That's a major thing. You're going to have mom and dad guilt for a long time, but Mary and Joseph who were the mom and dad of Jesus. There, that's it. There's nobody, you are raising the son of God. Like, you gotta get that right. Like, you need to be reading every James Dobson book there is. You need to be listening to every podcast there is. And let alone, you need to know where your kid is 
when you're traveling and for three days they did not know where he was. They traveled an entire day and didn't even know he was gone. And we look here um, at a mom who is terrified. Can you imagine? If you're a mom at Midtown right now or soon to be mom, you can feel you could literally feel the anxiety as it boils up. And if and in those days, you got to remember, there was no like uh, there there was no like Walmart that they would go to to see missing children posters. Okay, there was no Amber Alert where every phone at at this massive feast for God in this temple went off. Okay, there was none of that. This is what it looked like. It looked like a mom terrified, going through a city just like you and I would, pulling out her pocketbook and waving pictures, much like this. Have you seen him? This is my son. He's beautiful. He, had, he wears a red hat and a red shawl with a white shirt, t-shirt that we got. And, and that's this, if you don't know, this is Googled pictures of what Jesus looked like when he was, this is age nine. I Googled age nine for Jesus. That's, uh, that's him. Him and his mom, he's a mom's boy. We all know that. Uh, or maybe that one wasn't good enough. They're like, no, I don't recognize him. They're like, oh, that's okay. Have you seen this one? This is him and his father during homeschool time or whatever this is. He, he's learning to read. He's, he's learning all the languages and math and all that stuff. That's Joseph, by the way. And this is a lamp. Y'all didn't know they did night school, but they did night school back in the day. For the, If there's any like high schoolers, middle schoolers, just anybody in school, this these were tough times, y'all. These were tough times. Don't be complaining about your new schedule at your school with COVID and you got to wear a mask. Look at G look at the hat and look what he's doing. So there that No, I haven't seen him. I have no idea. We're like, "Well, maybe he looks a little older. Maybe you recognize him. This is him in dad's shop." There he is and learning to be a carpenter as we all know that he was. Well trained uh, by apparently Joseph aged very quickly in that last picture. We really don't know what Jesus actually looked like, but I'm assuming a strapping young man like that knows how to carve things. And the last one, my favorite, this is a legitimate picture of Jesus um, in physical form. You would hopefully realize if you lost a kid with a halo around it, but uh, in a gorgeous white choir robe, uh, but couldn't find him. Nowhere, nowhere to be found. And so they're, they're frantically looking, and I love the fact that this is what happens. Mary and Joseph decide to go back where the last place that they remember him being. Now, church, lean in, verse 45. This is what it says. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him there. And after three days, they found Jesus sitting in the temple. Now, we don't know if he stayed at a Holiday Inn. We don't know if he slept in the church house, but he was in the temple sitting there. And this is what he was doing. He was teaching the leaders and the leaders were listening and asking him questions. Now, you're around 12 years old at this time and you have more insight and theological revelation than the priests and teachers that are in that temple. And they're listening to a 12 year old as he sits on the steps and he talks. That's where they find him. This is what it says. When Jesus' parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why did you do this to us? Your father and I were very worried about you and have been looking for you everywhere. They've looked for him everywhere. Every town hall. They went to the police station. They've gone to every Starbucks and Chick-fil-A. But it was Sunday, so it was closed. And Jesus said to them, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand the meaning of what he said. I just get so, I get so uh, frustrated sometimes. I feel like if we're just going to have like a table to table conversation as if we're sitting down having coffee and it's personal. I get really frustrated the fact that sometimes I can lose Jesus. I can lose God in God's house. I feel like there's sometimes I have to be reintroduced to him. You know, right now we're trying to figure out how to open up God's house, we're trying to figure out what does it look like masks and with hand sanitizer and seating and social distancing that we can get so 
wrapped up in not just figuring out how to have church, but how to be with God, how to worship in God's house when sometimes we don't even know how to worship the God of the house. And so if there's anything that I feel like I've learned that there's such a personal God that we're, we can miss because we have worshiped maybe our idea of who God is. And so I want us to look at three things that I feel like I hear the church saying right now. This is the church. This is a up and coming generation. Also, this is an outcry of what I feel like we're saying. And we're saying three things. And the first thing I feel like we're saying is that we are over churched and we're underwhelmed. We're over churched and underwhelmed. I look at a quote from St. Augustine who says the most beautiful statement, and it's true, it's 100% true, that familiarity, being familiar with something, breeds contentment. That when you're so familiar with a setting or you're so familiar with something, you begin to get content with that setting or with whatever's going on. And, and we see it in the Old Testament in 2 Samuel chapter 6. This is the craziest story. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, we all remember, and we all say the same statement like, we got to get God out of the box. You got to get out of the box, man. Well, they had God literally at this time, the presence of God dwelled within a box. And they would carry this box. It was called the Ark of the Covenant. If you've never seen Indiana Jones movies, you, you, you surely know. They would carry the Ark of the Covenant on men's shoulders and they would move God throughout as they were journeying through. And in 2 Samuel chapter 6, um, the presence of God is moving from a guy whose name is Abinadab. They're moving it from his house and they're moving it back to Jerusalem. So they're very careful. There was ways to carry this. There were uh, protocols, procedures. There were rules. You did not touch the box. Like that's one thing you did not do. You told your kids, don't touch the box. And they would say, why? And you would say, because that's that's the presence of God. And everyone had this reverent fear. It was not... Uh, it was nothing that was just like a, a God that was distant. No, no, they knew where God was and they knew that God was with them, but they had a fear and they had a holy fear, a reverent fear of them. And so no one was to touch this, this box. They were to be carried by these priests and these men who were carrying the presence of God. Well, there was a boy who grew up in the temple. He grew up like me. If you're a pastor's kid, there might only be a few. You know what that's like. Um, it's me. I, I, I know what it's like to be in God's house and to kind of like play like, you know, like uh, hide and seek in the sanctuary, you know, and like get on the drums on a Saturday and maybe break a cymbal or you treated God's house as if it was your house. And that's how we see this young man who is uh, traveling. His name was Uzzah. And he was a PK, a pastor's kid who grew up and became familiar with the temple. He grew familiar with sacred things. He grew familiar with holy things. He realized that he could play games with church and, and kind of miss the whole point. And so what happens is there's Abinadab, or we're going to Abinadab's house, and there's you know Uzzah. And he's probably an intern at this time working for the church. But he's grown up so familiar with being around God's presence, he didn't even reverence or have the holy fear that we're talking about in the Old Testament. And there they are. They're carrying, you can imagine them carrying. I don't know how heavy the presence of God is, but it's probably, it's probably pretty heavy. And there they are carrying. And sure enough, they got familiar. They were like, you know what? Let's, um, let's instead of carry it, how about this? How about we take the load off each other? Let's, um, let's put it on, on a donkey. And so they find this donkey, they whistle this donkey over, which is a foreshadowing into the New Testament of how God's presence was carried in. And they put that, they put God on a donkey and strapped him like you would a Volkswagen, like you're going on family vacation, and put him on top of this donkey and stayed beside it to make sure it wouldn't fall. So they took the weight of God's presence off of themselves, put it on a donkey, and followed the donkey and let the donkey carry what men were supposed to carry the whole time. Well, sure enough, like every donkey does, I'm assuming, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm assuming um, that this donkey, that what happens is the donkey trips and falls in a hole, the donkey falls, and sure enough, God's presence in a box begins to tip 
Nobody moves. Everybody <gasps> flips out. And then all of a sudden, Uza, who has become so familiar with the presence of God, who's become so in tune with um, maybe playing church, acting like he has it all together, he reaches down to grab the box, the Ark of the Covenant, and in that moment is struck down dead. Now, before you, you say, that's a terrible God, I can't believe you would do that uh, to a young man, I think we need to realize, you know, uh, the, the fact and the understanding of becoming satisfied with God's presence. You know, I don't think God ever is at a point in my life, your life, anyone's life, where we're just satisfied with that's enough. You know, we're, we're disconnected at some point. We're distanced from heaven at some point, but he promises us his presence. And if there's one thing that will never get old, and I pray never gets old or familiar, is God's presence. I don't want to get complacent. I don't want to get to where it's common, where we make holy things that God does common. And it was so easy to do that as we're sitting in our pajamas for four or five months at our house, missing church. But what does that mean? What is it that we were really missing? And a lot of times we mistake church for God's presence. We think that that's the only place where God is, that he dwells there, he lives there, and works and moves there. But if you've ever had an encounter with God in a living room, maybe at a restaurant, in a hotel, or in a hospital, you realize that God is everywhere. And when he manifests his presence and he moves, he can move. You can have church anywhere. Church is different now within this COVID season. You're from, you might be watching from your living room thinking, I wish I was there because then I would feel like I'm in church. You don't have to just be in church. There's something very important and honestly biblical about gathering, but there's something so much more important that we miss. And we can miss Jesus when he shows up in the living room or in the kitchen as if he's not speaking already. We look at this and we have to remember who's in the room wherever you are. For those of you that are gathered together, those of you watching online or on social media, you might be watching in your car, you might be in an elevator, you might be anywhere, who knows, waiting for a doctor's appointment. But I believe that the creator of the universe, the one that has the stars, they've been flung into the uh, galaxy, the one who's spinning the earth right now at the perfect rate and the perfect angle, the one that created you and me, the one that named you before your parents did. Nobody knew you like he does, and nobody knows you like he does, and nobody has a plan like he does for you. That's who you have with you right now. A lot of times we don't know how to bring Jesus into the room and one of my things that I do, I don't want to preach at you. I'm not, I'm literally just, I'm looking at a lens. But if I could see literally directly through that lens, if we were to get very real right now, and I wouldn't be talking to a room, I'm just talking to you eye to eye over coffee. I believe that you need Jesus more than you think you do. Maybe you've been crying out for him. He hasn't been speaking. Or maybe you have looked for him and, and you feel like he's not there and you're in, a, you're in a really rough situation, I don't want you to get satisfied thinking that that's as far as God goes. God's got something bigger for you. And I believe that leaning in to who's in the room makes the difference. And so here we are. Sometimes we make God at the place of complacency. We say, you know, God's, God's not this, God's not that. He wasn't there for me. He never showed up for me, but God is too beautiful. For you to get satisfied. And I want us to not be so churched that uh, we miss what it's all about. The second thing I see is this, if you want to write this down, that we have become over-entertained and under-impressed. If you realize that there's just not enough worship, amazing videos to come out, there's not enough entertain me type of speakers, there's not enough uh, people that like, man, I get that. We've just become over entertained that we can miss God. I, we have entire cities devoted to it. You got Vegas, you got Orlando. For me, we got Pigeon Forge 
and Gatlinburg. And man, do we live it up like rednecks. You know it. I love taffy. I love cabins and fudge just as much as the next person does. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm just not that impressed after a while. You can only go to Ripley's so many times and then it's like, I've seen it. Like I've done it. And that's what we see, not just in this generation. We see it in the church. We got to have the next thing. You got to have this to, in order to be experiencing God. And, and uh, you got to have this or that. And, and you got to have money, budgets, programs, small group, curriculum. All these things, those aren't, those aren't bad things. They're not bad things. They're just not the thing. And we can miss the thing. We can miss him. We can miss God in God's house. So we have become over-entertained and under-impressed. There's an entire way of looking at it that I think that, that I, I think I grew up like that. I just wasn't impressed. No matter how great the service was, it wasn't enough for me because I just felt like I wasn't connecting with the source. Uh, honesty time, if I were to be honest, um, I lost Jesus in church. Uh, every Sunday I was in church. I never missed Sunday school. It was in every kid's program. I didn't have the lead role in the Christmas play, but almost close to it. I was a wise man. And I remember seeing baby Jesus and thinking, there he is, the one that it's all about, but still lost him. Didn't even know him at one point when we were in God's house. And I just believe that it doesn't matter about the style of music. It doesn't matter about the video that we produce. It doesn't matter about the graph. It doesn't matter about, and none of that stuff matters until you realize you're on the edge of earth and eternity. And the one that we're going to be looking at when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess is Jesus as Lord. And it's all about him, but we try and I've done it and I've done it. I feel like recently trying to make God look good, like doing everything I can to make sure that God, I don't, I don't want you to look bad. I want you to look good. So you're, you know, they're impressed with you and God doesn't need your help to make him look good. He's already good. And God doesn't need my help, uh, trying to, uh, to make him something that I think that he is. He is who he says he is, he says, I am who I am. And you know who he is? He's the one who is there in your car. He's in that sanctuary. He's not too busy for you. He's not busy with other requests. He's not on the throne shaking, wondering, what do I do with a pandemic like this? Or what do I do with a family situation like them? He's, he's leaning in and he's walking right next to you. And I'm going to do in a couple of minutes, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to, I'm going to try to bring him into the room that you're in. As I look at a lens and I don't know anybody that's watching, but I hope that you journey with me real, real quick for a few minutes through a prayer that will bring him into the place that you are. Cause if there's anybody that's so desperate that needs him, it's me, but honestly, it's all of us. We can pretend we can act like we have it together, but at the end of the day, we can't do life without him. And I'm going to kind of go off script here because I feel like I need to say something to somebody who's trying to do life without God. Maybe you've been trying to be good enough. Maybe you're trying to be the best dad you can. Maybe you're trying to uh, be the best student you can. Maybe you're trying to make all the right moves and all the right moves and all the right business deals and all the right things you're trying to do. You still feel empty. You feel like you're missing it. And it's not that you're not missing the great opportunities or the things you're not, you're doing things right, but you're doing it without knowing he's there with you. And, and I want to encourage somebody that you're, you're there with God in that moment. And the truth is, it's the last thing I'm, I'm, I'm done. Third thing is this, we've become overchurched and we've become underreached, overchurched, underreached says this, this is mom and dad talking to their son who has been gone for three days, okay? Son, why did you do this to us? Now, if you're a mom in the house, you would have said that a little bit different, but there again, it's Mary talking to Jesus and Jesus needed to be scalded, but how do you scald the son of man? You can't. 
says this, we've been looking for you. And Jesus said to them, why were you looking for me? I must be in my father's house. Can I tell you this? And I end with this. If you're looking for God, you don't have to go to the church that you're at. If you're looking for God, you don't have to find him with a priest. You don't have to go back to where the last time you met him. You have to be present where you are. And that's the address, the pinpoint place where God wants to reveal himself to you the most. At the bank, waiting in line for a restaurant. He's there. You can't leave him. You can't run fast enough from him. And the thing is, he loves you so much, church. I want you to hear this. He loves you so much. And if you're missing anything in this time of emptiness and distance, you need to hear that God's with you. And if you're missing something, it's probably the manifested presence of God. I want to pray for you, Lord. I'm so thankful for your presence, and I'm thankful for that you show up places. And so right now where they are, they close their eyes, and I'm going to ask them to do that everywhere, no matter where you're at, unless you're driving, of course. I just want you to close your eyes, and I want you to envision someone stepping into the room or the place where you are. You can hear him, and he stands there. You can feel the heat of another body, and he is looking at you, and he's asking, what is it that you really want? Maybe he's asking or saying, I've never left you. Did you not know where I would be? I'm at the same place. So God, I pray that you would minister in that place, in that sanctuary. Amen. Let me tell you this, the sanctuary is not the location where you're at. God created a new one in the New Testament, which is us. So you don't have to go anywhere God's presence dwells in you. You want to talk to God, the closest place, you can talk to him in your car. I want you guys to know this. I love you. I'm going to be praying for you. I believe in your pastors. They've got an incredible vision, and I love watching you guys from a distance. And so my prayers are for you, and I pray the best. Uh, and if anything, connect with me on social media. Send me a message. would love to just hear what God's doing in your life. Love you so much. Thanks so much, church. Pastor Adam, thank you so much for that word. That was right on time, exactly what we needed right now, going through the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Um, I know personally, this has been a time of you know, a lot of self-reflection, you know, a, a time of just really, really honing in and focusing on um, what God wants us to be, who he wants us to be, what he wants us to be and everything. So thank you so much, Pastor Adam, for that word. Now, if you prayed that prayer and that you're wanting to take those next steps, please go ahead and call us on our, um, our fresh line. The number's on your screen and we would love to partner you with someone who can walk alongside of you as you start this new journey because this new journey, I'll let you know it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be fun because you've got a family because here at Midtown, you belong before you believe. Now, call that number, text that number right now. Don't waste any time because we want to make sure we can, we can link you up with one of our Midtowners. Until next time, make sure you follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the church website. Until next time, this is Chris. I'm out. Have a great week.